this is going to be fun. That's, that's all I'm going to tell you. It's going to be fun. For the guys that knows this guy, uh, you'll understand. And you'll go, there's a lot more where that came from. And the, the people that don't know him, you will get a pretty good idea. Uh, this is the first time John's played in this thing. He's played here before. But uh, um, it, it's extraordinary in golf when you can you can go back to the throw, throwback days, which we were the throwback days, and the idiocy that emanated. And we all know guys that were bonded with absurdity. The guys, you know, the guys in school that, that always got in trouble and they always talked their way out of it. Uh, the guys that dated the best looking girls, had the fastest cars. Uh, that the first, they were the last guy at the party and the first guy you dared to do something. We all know those guys. We all know those guys. Every one of us knows those guys. Well, I'm going to take you to the mothership. I'm out of here. To the mothership. Uh, it, uh, it, it is. And I, I can't tell you, I know a lot of really crazy people. I mean, that's what I deal in. I've known it. <laughs> what you got right here, you don't go any farther. This, this is it. This is it. The stories we'll tell tonight, we'll get into, are, will be few hey, compared Smitty. to what they really are. And uh, we'll just give you a little background, you know, of, of what's going on and, and how he started and what he did. And it's really, truly... And I, I want to write a book, but I can't really write a book because it's absurd. It is really absurd. You can't put these stories in a book. You can't put them in a movie. He was, honest to God, you see, everybody see Ten Cup? Yeah. That was him. That was Ten Cup. When I talked to the writers, I talked to John Norwell and, and, uh, and um, Ron Shelton. And we started talking. I said, well, I got a guy that's, you know, that character you got? <laughs> not even close. Not even close? I mean, it's not even a close second. I start telling stories, go, holy crap. So they start writing in stuff. Um, it, it is truly, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm a, a good friend of his, very proud to be a good friend of his, and this will be a very nice evening. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, without further ado, the most absurd man in golf that I have ever met, and I met them all. I'm out of here. John Jacobs. I'm out of here. Thank you, guys. Am I, am I on? Is this thing working? It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Are we up? Is am, that up? Am I on? Can, Can you hear, hear me? Here, here. We're good. Okay, we're good. Okay. Go anyway, ahead. it's a pleasure to be here. I, uh, I'm just looking around the room. I'm not sure. Hit it. I said I'm looking around the room here. I'm not sure if my partner and I can beat anybody in this tournament. <laughs> Is there any drinkers in here? Oh, f we got all of you guys handled. <laughs> There's I, our I first know. Blink. Mangini did. There's a blink. Didn't put Mine their hand <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I know we're going to have a ball this week, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I I play with this gentleman over here twice in the uh, Tommy Bahama, and uh, I think his team probably beat us both times. But he's invited me up here, and I'm just happy to be here. I hope the weather gets a little warmer because I only brought shorts. So, I like your style, by the way. Believe me, as much alcohol as he's drank over the last 50 years, there's nothing going to, there's no way in the world he's going to get cold. Um, okay, let's start off, let's start off this idiocy. You're 68 years of age right now, and there's not a guy that knows you, not one of us. You told me we're going to Not one of us life. that think you would be alive at 68. Is that correct, Covey? <laughs> No chance. None. Me? No, him. Absolutely. He's been the best. Okay, let's start off. I, there was an article a long time ago, 1976. Sport Magazine did an article on you. And it started off with a story about when you were, I believe, 15 and a half going to the National Junior Championship in Detroit, Michigan. Could you, could you please take us... <laughs> now remember, how, how old were you? 15 and a half or 16? Uh, I'm not sure, somewhere in there. That's okay, fire away. Anyway, this thing's not on, right? Uh, I, I qualified for the National Junior, and it's at Lockmore Country Club in Detroit. You got it? Is it going? Yeah, yeah, then here. And uh, I get there, and uh, they're putting us in members' homes. And I thought, man, this don't look, this ain't gonna work. So, 
I called my brother and I said, I, 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 Tell I, him who your brother is. Uh, my brother is Tommy Jacobs, who played the tour for years, Ryder Cup player, blah, blah, blah. Scratching. How in the hell am I going to figure that out? Okay. It's on off. Hey, I'm in the business. <laughs> go, go, do. So anyway, I should let Gary tell you. He knows these stories better than I do. I've told them to him. So he, he, he's learned by people that I've been around doing them. Anyway, I remember I was with uh, Bob Carson, who I don't know if some of you I think know Bob Carson, Southern California, and I, he's thirteen. He's thirteen. I'm sixteen. Neither one of us got a driver's license. I said, well, I'll figure this out somehow. So we I get down. You know, it's Detroit. I, I get a fake ID and we get a rent car. <laughs> get a rent car. Check in at the Hyatt. Wait a wait. End up, hold end it, hold up it, watching hold the it. sheep wrestle Dick the Bruiser. Oh, hold it. Bob Carson says, I thought we came here to play. <laughs> no, 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 no. Now, first of all. Oh, there's a lot to it, but you can't find lot, stories. That's, well, that's not even one no, of the good No, no, we got to start this off. So he gets off the airplane. He gets off the airplane. All the old ladies, this on. Okay, I can talk loud here. anyway. Okay, he gets off the airplane, and the old ladies are sitting there with the thing. Okay, John Jacobs or whatever. He gets off the airplane in first class. He's got Zanella pants on. Now he's 15 and a half. He got Zanella pants on, Pringle sweater, cashmere, wrapped around here. He walks right by the old lady that's sitting there with the sign that says John Jacobs because they're going to put him in a yellow bus and take him to the YMCA. Okay? <laughs> this son of a bitch goes right past him, goes to the Hertz counter, lays down a fake ID and a credit card and says, I'll have a Lincoln Continental. <laughs> he gets a Lincoln Continental, and then instead of driving, can't, does it work? You can't tell these damn stories. He gets a Lincoln Continental and drives right to the Hyatt Regency. Gets in the Hyatt Regency and checks in with his fake ID and his credit card. He is 15 and a half, six foot two, 190. Close? Right on. And you, okay, he goes and checks into his room, goes downstairs, and of course asks the gentleman if they could get him uh, a couple of girls and maybe a nice bottle of wine. <laughs> now he's 15 and a half, he's got a roll like this, okay? Spews it out, and of course, here they come, laughing and giggling, up to his room. The funny thing about this story is, Johnny said the hardest thing about this was, after three days, he went back to the hotel and the manager goes, sir, Mr. Jacobs, come here. Can we see your credit card? It didn't quite register. So he hands him the credit card, and the guy, a couple of us have been there, they take the scissors and go like that. <laughs> Johnny went from the YMCA in a Lincoln Continental. No, from the Hyatt. From the Hyatt <laughs> to, to a yellow bus and the YMCA <laughs> in a day, and no hookers left. <laughs> Is that the story? You know, the funny thing about it, I had who, some of these guys know Bob Carson. He's a g good amateur player here now, but he was 13, and he, I took him along with me this whole trip. <laughs> but I'll never forget, we went and saw Dick the Bruiser wrestle the Sheik at Cobo Hall, and you park up on top, Cobo Hall. I tell you, we had a ball. Anyway, that was the start. And then I, I left that tournament. My brother was on the tour, and they were playing the St. Paul Open. and. Um, I got there. I, I was just going to hang around and hopefully one of them would pay my way back home. I had no money, zero blank. And I get there and it was $25. $25 to enter the tournament. Go out and qualify on Monday, play in the tournament. I'm one stroke off the lead after the first round. I said, Jesus Christ, am I doing everything right in life or what? You know? <laughs> and, I'll tell you what, I had a hell of a time. And then uh, after that, I came home. No, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Let's see. So no, you, that's done. You the, no, you qualified, you qualified I made for a cut. tour event at yes. how old? Fifteen and a half. So is that the, is that the youngest? Well, I, I think, well, I don't know that, how the, that uh, uh, kid from Hawaii might have been younger. But, but that, yeah, it's a it was billion close. years ago, though. A billion years that's ago, That's a billion right. years ago. Uh, anyway, it was a ball. I still didn't have enough money to get home. <laughs> that never stopped him. So yeah. I, I guess during that summer, your brother, Tommy Jacobs, 
got you. Can you hear? Everybody can hear? Tommy Jacobs. I want to talk into this. <laughs> Tommy says, so what are you doing this summer? He says, obviously nothing. So he goes on the tour and he starts caddying for different guys. So who did you caddy for? Who was your first job you caddied for on the tour when you were 15 and a half? Uh, I was very lucky. I played with our caddy for Tony Lima. But before this story, you know how he got his name. Probably none of you guys know. You know? Well, I'll tell you the real story. <laughs> Tony, my dad ran a golf course in Whittier called Candlewood Country Club. Tony was dead broke. He came and stayed with us for about two months. After he terrorized all the women at the club, my dad trying to get rid of him, blah, blah, blah. So they had a little function. My brother came in, a, a fellow named Don Witt, you probably don't remember, Johnny Pot, Jim Faree. They came in and played a little exhibition to raise Tony some money. And the next tournament was Mesa Verde. He goes down to Mesa Verde, plays good. He's paired with Bob McAllister on Sunday, last round. McAllister got a three or four stroke lead. And his friend owned a winery in, in Napa, California. And he sent some champagne down thinking Bob McAllister's going to win. Bob shot about 42 the back nine, <laughs> got pissed off, and he leaves. Tony knew that the champagne was, came from him. He goes in the, in the locker, which all the sports writers you know, drank in that day, had a good time. He comes in and he says, hey, champagne for everybody. So, I mean, that's how Tony got his name. <laughs> So you're learning something here, huh? Very little, very little. Um, um, Johnny was schooled by a guy, and I know it's hard for I'm you to believe. I'm starting to sober up. Let's I go. know you're not. You'll never sober up. That's impossible. You're blowing a four or five just standing here. Um, his buddy, his buddy of all time, that taught him everything. Uh, is a guy named John Nichols that we all know from Southern California. Luke. Uh, Luke was a bartender, owned a bar, and he couldn't remember names, and so he just called everybody Luke. Um, and Luke and Johnny got into all sorts of, just all sorts of bizarre happenings. Why are you touching me in the arm? Because maybe some of these guys, anybody go to the SC football games? SC football games, yeah. that's and, where uh, his bar was. It was the Trojan Barrel. He was partners, a little partner with the McKeever brothers. Do you remember the Trojan Barrel? Yeah. Okay, just want to make sure okay, that so, you guys believe this. So story. Johnny goes, so Johnny goes to SC. He enrolls at the University of Southern California. SC, how old were you? Man, that was, that was tough, that school. How old? I was 18. He seven, was eight, oh, seven, almost 18. Almost 18. He enrolls. And how long, Johnny, did you go to SC? Uh, three days. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. He didn't quite like the curriculum, so he went for three days. Did so he they, they, yeah, he graduated. You know, yeah. I was a fast, alcohol. I was a fast. <laughs> I was a fast learner. <laughs> So there, there's a legendary trip where they went up to go to SC and they played in a tournament and now you are on the drive back from SC, Southern California, south on the 405. And tell us about that trip with <laughs> Luke, who had already, how old was Luke at that point? Oh, probably 23. 23 and you had how many DUIs at that point? Uh, a lot. Uh, double uh, figures. A lot. Okay, go ahead. You know, you know, in those days, uh, DWI was a, a set of Wilson irons and a, a golf bag. You get out of it. it. Doesn't work that way anymore. Anyway, we we're just going down the four. There's another golf pro that some of you remember. The name George Shortridge from Minneapolis. He played quite a bit on the tour. He was in the well, was my car. I was too drunk to drive, but I let a guy drive that had four or five DWIs. Real, real, wasn't too clever. Get going down to 405. We're staying in some dive place in, I don't know, Seal Beach or something. So anyway, I get, I hear this, like I kind of roll over in the back seat and I hear this. Uh, so you you were, you were in the back seat? Yeah. Prone. Out, I'm down. Okay. I wait, kind of roll over and, I, uh, and I'm going, God, we're going to get home pretty quick here. You know? <laughs> so. Uh, two minutes later, I hear, and then it goes louder and louder and louder. 
Boom, 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 like this on. To look up, the fucking cops banging on the window. He's in the left, left-hand lane of the 405, in neutral, going as fast as he can. You know. <laughs> and you know, I'm the one that gets in trouble because it's my car. He's drunk. You know, even those days it was like, what did you, how did he get to drive? Blah blah blah. So off we went. Uh, needless to say, we didn't quite make that turn. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Luke's still a good friend of mine. In fact, uh, Cuffy right here in front is yeah. a good friend of Luke's. I, you know what the best story is when Luke caddied for you over in like the Belgian Open when you stayed in the room. How about when he caddied, he caddied for me in, in the PG or the US Open? I can't remember. <laughs> and we get out there and pair with Weisskopf, and uh, he can't f make it. And, I, and <laughs> I says, look, the back nine, if I start driving it good, just give me my wedge in a putter and I'll make it. <laughs> so he falls asleep by a tree and has a f***ing seizure. <laughs> you know the story. Falls asleep, has a seizure. They take him away. Take, take him away. It's about the 13th or 14th hole. God damn, if I don't get up to, I'm on the 18th tee. It's a little uphill driving down the valley. And I look over and here he is. He's barefooted, <laughs> still got my name on, <laughs> on the back of his shirt. They got to, they put him in the IV, took him to the hospital. He got out, he, you know, he finally got a little, little healthier. Got out of there, <laughs> got out of there, back to the golf course. <laughs> I mean, it, it, Cuffy knows, I mean, there's more I mean, stories about this guy. Weisskopf says, what, who are these guys you hang around? <laughs> you know, he's trying to win the tournament. I'm trying to make the cut. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Go ahead. He said he was your date for like the Italian Open with the flowers and the maids. That was the, this. Oh, uh, no. Here. Well, Benson and Edges took me over to, our, to, to, to York, England. And, uh,. Shit, Luke got, he got so drunk. He ended up re re representing Benson and Hedges in their cup matches. And you know, I, just, I, I said, oh yeah, he's a famous pro from America. You can, this guy can really, he can really play. Okay. Uh, he's okay, about a we 12. Had a, we had a ball. We had an absolute ball. I remember we, at the tournament, I finished like second or third. I hit it out of bounds in the last hole. Lose the tournament, but it's still a nice check I got. We get on a train going into town. Get drunk, we get into town, blah, 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 the hookers steal our money, can't get out of London. I call them. And this is the honest to God truth. I, I gotta go play, I gotta go play two more tournaments for the Vincent and Hedges people. They've already given me my check beforehand. I gotta play two more tournaments, I got no money. So I called the PG, called the PGA, and I knew Ken Schofield. When I played in the, the British Open in the early 70s at St. Andrews, uh, Ken was my driver. And he ends up the head of the whole <laughs> European tour. I called him, he's working for the tour. I said, Ken, look, I got a problem here. I got no <laughs> money. I'm here, I got to play two more. I just explained the whole thing. And, and I'll tell you what, he fessed up, gave me, I mean, ponied up, gave me some money. Off I went. We've, uh, we've been best of friends since. But <laughs> I guess if you treat, if you treat people, <laughs> Like you like you want to be treated or something. I mean, I've had a very blessed life, and uh, I mean that was an unbelievable story because I remember we were broke, we couldn't pay the hotel. We're downtown in Mayfair, and a room is more than a week's rent on the tour in any hotel. I mean, like, well, how do we get out of this trap? And we we did, we got out. Then I played good at the, the next two tournaments, so nice deal. You're back on. <laughs> All right, now you get of age where you actually have to go into the military. <laughs> no, so you're at, you're at 18, now you go to four. Uh, after three days of school, I knew that wasn't for me. I graduated, <laughs> I graduated quick. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So you're, you're now three days of school. You can't do that. So now you're all of a sudden. Well, the draft you go to you go to Fort. You, they drafted well, you. No, go no, to the, Fort you know, the, the draft was in those days. You had to go three years. I thought, I thought, well, hell, I'm, go I, I'm not going to come out of college at 22 or three, and probably me 28. And but, <laughs> but, and then go three years in the army, and then I just wanted to play pro golf anyway. So, 
I enlisted. So I ended up at Fort Hood, Texas, and uh, I got my brother, Billy Maxwell, <laughs> Johnny Pot, and Palmer to come play an outing to get me out of the, you know, the real shooter. <laughs> <laughs> to run the golf course. So they played the out, put me at the golf course, and the general, I mean, I know his name well. I, I remember him dearly. He's about 65 or 70, but his wife's 25. So, and she, she loved golf, and she, there was about five of us that ran the golf, golf course. Took turns running it. Stole all the cart money. So, so you know, usually when you take, when you have group lessons, it's like uh, four or five people in the group, and they have one pro. They just work the other way. <laughs> so, I mean, I could bore you with another story. I mean, I, I, right after that, I went down to play in the Mexican amateur. Why, why, and I was why, why, AWOL, but I, I'm speeding this up because there's other better stories. Okay. So I come back, and, and, and that pissed him off. I had. I, <laughs> they rained out. I stayed there. The guy's going to give me 50000 in the Calcutta and blah, blah, blah. I overstayed my leave. They came and got me all the way to Monterey, Mexico from Fort Hood, Texas. <laughs> Put me on a plane at Andrews Air Force Base. Put me back to Fort Hood. He says, you know, I'm going to teach you how this military works. I says, you know, you feel about this high. I'm in a general's office. His desk about 20 yards from me. And he says, I'm sending you to Vietnam and you're going to turn into a troop or you're going to get killed. I said, okay, fine. You know, so <laughs> I go back to the golf course I'm still at. I got my little bunk in the corner. Is that the only reason the general sent you to yeah. Vietnam? No, there's a few. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did it have to do anything with the 29-year-old wife? No, I, I explain. You guys understand. What? <laughs> no, you went over that real quick. What no, happened? No, I don't, what happened in that lesson? Here, there there had be, what happened in that lesson? Uh, what happened in the lesson? You know, it wasn't me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> she had other. She had did other. She, she had other. Did they have to go to Vietnam? She had, she had other instructors. Did you she? know why he picked on me? Because he knew I had listed for three years. These other guys are ready to go home. But because like I was the last catch he could. <laughs> so, you know, so he says, I'm sending you to Vietnam. So I leave and I go back and I'm in the room and I get the map out. I've never even heard of Vietnam. Get the map out and right on this map, I got this atlas. It says, the Paris of the Orient. I said, how sweet is this? The Paris of the Orient. I said, so, I, you know, before, I mean, a lot of you guys know, before you get deployed overseas, you get 30 days off. You can either take it or you don't take it. So I took my 30 days. I go home. The friggin' the, the, the war breaks out. They send 27,000 troops. I'm going like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> so anyway, that's how I ended up in Vietnam. No, I, Vietnam it. was better. Hold it. Okay. So you go to Vietnam, and knowing you, you're an entrepreneur, and you size up the situation. You were on point a lot of times, and I hear you were a really good shot over there um, when you were running. Oh, point. yeah, yeah. I'm a, that was a great shot. I shot off every, you know, the, they, they stuck all the first lieutenants on ahead of the guard, the like grunts like me, the guard duty. So, you know, eight hours of guard duty, after about four hours, everything moves. <laughs> <laughs> so I just told everybody I was scared to death anyway, and I f***ing shot at everything, man. I, I killed, I killed every dog, every cat. I shot out every second lieutenant, uh, their, their headlights. No, hold it, hold it. So when, when when you're on guard you're on guard duty and, and a and a vehicle comes up, you have to stop and, and the lights are on them and you have to go, halt, yeah. give me your name and what are you? Go ahead. But but you know what? After a while it got to be fun, you know. It was first it was like, you know, you had the bullhorn sometimes. If you were not in a where the Viet Cong we call, I don't know. There were there were guys that uh, your friends during the day, and you fought them at night. It was just a goofiest thing. Well, if any of you guys were there, it was the goofiest <laughs> thing in the world. Of it. So it got to be, a, you know, instead of the bull, halt, who goes there? You know, you're yelling at a Jeep's kind of coming at Not fast, but they're coming at you. Nobody liked the second lieutenants anyway, because they were, I mean, they didn't want to be in the service either. 
<laughs> I mean, they were just college graduates that ended up second lieutenants, wanted to spend their two years and go home. But us being privates, or, you know, I, I, mean, I, I had like corporal. I was a corporal. <laughs> what is this? I really, I moved up the ladder fast. Over there. <laughs> so, at first it was like with the blowhorn, halt, who goes there? Halt, who goes there? At the end, we had so much fun shooting these f***ing lights out, it was like, halt, who goes there? You know, boom, boom. <laughs> because, you know, half the time, I mean, I didn't smoke dope over there, but everybody right. did. And No, I, I honestly didn't. And, and I mean, I did a couple times over there. All I wanted, all I wanted to do, all I wanted to do was go he eat it. it. I just wanted to go eat some ice cream. I, I f***ing ate about 19 gallons of ice cream if I smoked one joint. So, <laughs> so well, anyway, this, this is backtracking a little bit. I, when I first got there, I went over with a suit on and I was attached to 173rd Airborne. And they, they only went over there and then came back home because they didn't play by the rules. They shot them out of the sky, blah, blah. And make a long story short, they quit jumping over there. But I, I would, because I was sent by this general, I had to find a company because I had to be there 12 months. I had to do my duty. So they go home. I end up in this, I get there at night. I'm in this tent, I'm in this tent city. We get there, I don't know, 8 o'clock. It was dark. We get there at 8 o'clock. Shit at noon, I mean at midnight. Boom, 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 boom. I've never even heard, I don't even know how to load my M15 or 16 or whatever. I, 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 really, I don't even know how to load this thing. So the guy yells, get in the ditch. And I didn't know they had this ditch around the tents. They had these little, where the water drains out in case it rains from the tents. I'm down there in this tent, and the guy says, the, secure your weapon, don't let it get wet. But, you know, my weapon was in my bed. I fucking did, I did I said, secure my weapon. So I, you know, I got a, uh, a whole, I got bullets around here. I got my canteen on. I got, man, I'm ready, but I got no gun. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so we go back, we go back. We go back in, <laughs> 2 o'clock, we get back to bed, at 3 o'clock I got to go to the bathroom, I go into the latrine, you know, and they're, they're, they're big tents, you go in the latrine, you get done, wash my hands, I go, there, there's drinking water, the guy, I go to get a drink, he says, he said, uh, don't drink the water, it's been poisoned by the Viet Cong. Well, I don't know, you know, they, everybody fucks with the new guys, right, so I don't know, here's this. So, said, I go back to the tent, I says, oh man, you know, 24 hours before, I, I mean, I was home, and I thought, what is going on here? This guy comes in, I don't know what time, the sun is just coming up, you know, it's the same, sh uh, drop your c and grab your socks, young trooper. <laughs> I run out, I look out this tent, I'm on the eighth tee of Tan Sanu Golf Course, I said, God damn, how, I mean, what kind of deal is this? I go to Vietnam, I go through all this, I'm on the eighth tee of Saigon Country Club. I mean, <laughs> pretty nice, huh? Anyway, I mean, there's more to these stories that go on and on, but I ended up winning the, I weasel my way into win the Vietnam Open. <laughs> so, and the, I, I represented Vietnam and Thailand in the All Asian, the All Asian Golf Championship. Oh, to see you so <laughs> the guy, you know, it's like, he don't look very Asian. Oh, no, they, they're bigger in that Vietnam. <laughs> Just oh. <laughs> now, when you're over there, you're an entrepreneur, so you win that tournament, and you end up coming back to the United States after your tenure there in Vietnam, and you come back with, I believe it was $138,000 in a duffel bag. You know, it was, uh, you know, it, uh, that's all I had left, because... Uh, <laughs> that's, that's all I had left? You know, when... Has anybody, was it, has anybody been overseas in the military? Because you know what the corruption is. Corruption is brutal in, in military. If, if we had script, we, ha we had script money. It's like little Monopoly money. But if you can get U.S. dollars, all the girls that own the bars in town 
they got scripts from the GI. So if we had a hundred dollar bill, they'd give us two dollars in script. And a lot of times at the end of the month, when the money was tight, they give us three scripts for a dollar. So we could take those. My friend Bob Schintz, who's a golf pro now, kind of runs in the cycle. <laughs> he ran the Air Force. The Air Force did all the money, all the money orders. So we could take the script, buy money orders, send it home, and then have it resent back to us. And that's what we did. And then from that, we parlayed that into the icebox, <laughs> ovens, <laughs> ref <laughs> refrigerator. Nobody had a refrigerator in Vietnam that I knew of, other than a hotel. And there was a big uh, uh, the RMK BRJ, the construction company, used to bring these big tires over then put them on their machines. But we put ice boxes, <laughs> ice boxes, <laughs> ovens, whatever, inside these tires and bonded them up. <laughs> and anyway, it was very lucrative. <laughs> I, I got back home. I, I had a bunch of money. Christ, I'm only 20 when I got home. And I thought, geez, I got all this. I mean, money meant nothing in Vietnam. I mean, it, I don't know, for some reason, it didn't mean anything. Uh, I never had any, but it, I don't know, just. Where'd you go when you got home? Where'd you go when you flew home? To the, I get to the uh, Oakland Army Terminal, and they give you the re-up deal and everything else. Couldn't wait to get out of there, go back, get on a plane, go to Vegas. So yeah. my dad knew that, uh, he knew that when I came home, and he can't find me four or five days go by. And I thought I could sneak in, blow my money, and go home. <laughs> the Red Cross contacted me at the Sands Hotel. <laughs> this is about the fifth day I was at $135,000, $38,000. 20 years old, I had to have the Red Cross buy me an airline ticket home. <laughs> You so, are a derelict. Okay. <laughs> you know, you. I, I, I mean, these, these. I mean, I'm making fun of myself, kind of, and everything. But they're tr they're they're fun deals because I, I didn't like try to hurt anybody. My, I just kind of went through. I just kind of fell in my lap all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 there you go. Basically, you end up going back to Asia to play on the Asian tour where you actually win the Asian Order of Merit and became biblical over there. Because I gotta tell you, we've grown up together, nobody hit it farther than this guy. Nobody, nobody, not even close. And he's 68 right now and he can annihilate it. But when he was young, it was frightening. He was also very good looking and it pissed me off. <laughs> because that's a whole different story. So he goes over to Asia, goes back over there, where he literally is a king, and he employs a caddy named... Ca caddy... Caddy. What story is this? I'm, I'm still stuck on the f Vietnam. What? Stevie. Oh, Stevie. my boy, Stevie. I knew Tiger was in trouble when he got Steve. So I get over to Vietnam. Hold it, hold it, hold it. So Steve Williams first. Young kid. First, how old was he? Steve had his hair was down over his shoulders. Down. I mean, he's not the workout guy now. He was the, you know, dude. You know, like, he was a dude. He was a dude. Where, where's the f***ing caddy hotel? Whoa. <laughs> so see, Steve Williams. His first job was you. So, uh, I mean, he was a good caddy. I mean, so he, anyway, <laughs> Steve, I mean, he's bossier and shit. I, you know, I don't know how, I mean, he's changed a little bit over the years. I don't know how, I mean, Raymond, Flo he caddied for Raymond for years. Raymond didn't know how to get rid of him. He, he tried to become part of Raymond's family. Finally, Ray Raymond, when, when Tiger fired Fluff, for what, you know, we all know what Fluff was doing with Tiger stuff, so. <laughs> Raymond called Tiger, man, I got the perfect guy for you. He likes to work out and this and that, so he, that's, and then they fall. You know, Steve's, uh, uh, I like Steve, but he's a tough guy. He, you know, it's, he, he, he thinks he's the player. You know, that's a bad, it's not, doesn't work 
real good sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, we're playing. We're playing. We're, 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 <laughs> we win the tournament. I don't know. We won a couple of tournaments, but we get to Singapore. I knew I was in trouble. We get to Singapore. And f I'm, I'm drinking all the way around the course, and I, f I'm seeing stars. It's 109 degrees. And and I'm, I'm drinking water. I'm drinking vodka. I'm drinking beer. I'm, we got no carts. I, I, you know, shit. I'm walking barefooted for a whole week. So. We come to the 18th hole, and uh, you remember T.C. Chin that double hit the shot? So it's, it's, I got a one-stroke lead on him going at 18. And I'm playing with T.C. Chin and Graham Marsh. And, and <laughs> I drive a little right, it's a par five kind of up the hill dogleg right, and I drive it, and it goes over by the tree. I thought it'd be all right. There's palm trees about every probably 10 or 15 steps, and I, I think I'm all right. I get over there, there's no Steve. My ball's about... Uh, three feet short of the tree, but I, I got the tree, the stump's pretty big, and I got I can't do anything but maybe pitch. I could take a shot out of it. There's an eight iron sitting by the tree. Steve's up by the green. <laughs> he just leaves the eight iron, and there was not going to be any argument. <laughs> so anyway, I chipped it out. I hit it. I hit it short of the green, and then I pitched on the other guy. Thank God, didn't make a par. Won the tournament. So we go on to the next week. I won a couple times. We're going on to the next week was Taiwan, and the greens are unplayable. They, 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 they had a fungus, and the greens were ruined. So what they did is they put clay down, and they watered it so we could putt on. Was, you know, <laughs> stuff. It, 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 it was not good. So <laughs> I'm, I don't know, there's about four of us that could win the tournament on the back. You might have, you, didn't you go over there one? Were you over there that year? So uh, <laughs> this hole you can drive. It's about the 15th hole. Like, like I said, four or five of us can win. I drive the green, but I got about a 40-foot putt. And <laughs> fuck, look at it over. I said, Steve, what do you do? Steve says, you got to chip. I mean, it, it was that bad, the greens. I said, I don't know. I'll putt this thing. So I putt it up, put it back, put it up, <laughs> knocked it in, four putt, right? I go over just to go like boom on my bag. The putter slips out of my hands goes over this barbed wire fence, right on the edge of the green. And uh, I said to, uh, actually, it went over, I had to mark my ball. It went over the fence before that. Then I had to come back and put it in with a wood. Then I go back, and, I, and Steve, the other guy holds out. I go over there, and Steve, I give you a hundred. Get to get over this fence. He says, Fuck you, I ain't going over this fence. I says, I'll give you 300. Get over this fence. He says, JJ, you, I've had enough of you. I said, you had enough of me. You just won twice as me. I said, you can go smoke your friggin' dope and blah, 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 we're arguing. That. So finally I turn, I gotta get this putter. I still got a chance to win. I got 16, 17, 18 to putt. So I go over there, it's on the edge of the, it's on the edge of this uh, maneuvers. I don't know, Taiwan what, country, I don't know if you've ever been there. What, 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 what maneuvers? I don't know, there's military, it's a military base War on the games? side of the Well, they're War doing games. something over there. This, uh, this tank comes up, and, <laughs> and I'm over there, hey, oh, whoa, hey, man, general, whoa, USA, whoa, you know. <laughs> it doesn't work over there. So, man, then I started getting, the, like, the money out. I'm going like this, so they come out of their, you know, they open the top up, and the guy comes out, he says, well, I'm waving this money, I'm going like, you know. <laughs> well, finally, I get him out of the damn tank, he comes over. <laughs> Throws the putter back over, <laughs> hand the money through the fence, barbed wire fence, go over the deal. That was the last time Steve Williams caddied for me. <laughs> All right. We got to be done by now, aren't we? No. They're, they're still laughing, no much fall asleep. I got to be dead. Okay. You win the Order of Merit, what year? Uh, 84. 84. How much money did you come back to the United States with in two duffel bags, and what happened? Well, Tom Pernice counted it for me. It was 256000 Yeah! <laughs> yeah! That's dangerous. That's really dangerous. What happened? Uh, $100 bills. $100 bills. Um... <laughs> Who picks you up at the airport? Well, there's, I, can see a, I can see a lady here. This is kind of a bad story. <laughs> well, there's more women here. I mean, I can't. Let's, 
they're laughing. They're having a, no, they're having a good think time, so. ladies. I don't know. They're having a good anyway, time. Anyway, uh, Stricky's got a new girlfriend too. Out of way, Stricky. All right. So you come back and well, you lead up to that. I'm gonna have a drink. Have a drink. <laughs> so he comes back in 1984. <laughs> He has got two hundred eighty-four thousand dollars. Oh, I gained thirty. In two duffel bags, so he comes back and he flies into LAX, where his boy, his boy, Luke, picks him up in a limo. They are now going to drive down. This the is my driver from the four hundred five. Yeah, four hundred five. They're going to drive down now to the four hundred five, where they go back to the condo that Johnny, he's always borrowing a condo at La Costa, so he goes back to. La Costa. No, I, I, I own this one. Oh, you this own that my, one? This, this, oh, this oh, oh, is that? Oh, we'll get to that story later. Yeah, yeah. No, that was, yeah, that was. It's a was, small condo. Yeah, it's a small <laughs> condo and all. Anyway, so he goes back, and and reluctantly there are, I'm guessing, eight hookers in the place, and the party starts. Uh, by the way, the person that set this up was a good friend of Gary's, Don Palmer. But it had Hollywood connections, so a good friend of him. Anyway, I don't, this is uh, really kind of a bad story. <laughs> uh, do you want to hear a bad story or not? Anyway. Yeah, I think they want to hear a bad story. Anyway, we get down there and it will be edited. we're a little drunk and, you know, we were snorting that Alka-Seltzer stuff. <laughs> we, we... Uh, we, the girls, I didn't know how, I mean, what did they want, how to pay? I said, look, I got an idea. I just, I got, I'm in my room. I got the hose coming out the back door. He's got I got the two stores. I, the, I bring the hose up. I just, the wet t-shirt contest, <laughs> put some sticking on, just roll around. Whoever can stick the most hundreds on, that's how much you guys get. <laughs> Man, they're rolling all over the head. Well, so. Make a long story short. Sure, there's more to this story, but I don't know how bore you guys. So we wake up at seven in the morning, just Luke and I, and nobody's around. And you know, we're coming to blah blah blah, and kind of pass out again. <laughs> put the TV on, pass out again. Finally, about three in the afternoon, I'm starting to think, where's the fucking money? <laughs> Where is this money? So we're, not, we're looking, we tore the whole condo apart, tore it apart, car, tore it all apart, can't find anything. They got us, I'm calling the Gary's friend, Don Palmer, where are the girls got the money, blah, blah, blah. So finally about five o'clock, Luke says, you know what, you went over to Asia with nothing, f it. We had a good time with one night, <laughs> let's have a drink. God damn if he doesn't open the fridge, the freezer, and that's where all the money was. Two hundred and fifty-four thousand in the freezer. I, I never, you know, pretty good story. But I mean, it sounds like bullshit, but you can't make these things up. <laughs> the best story. This is changing. This is changing a little bit. When Gary and I played off at Newport Beach, I don't know if any of you guys watched it at all, but. Uh, we go to the 18th hole. There was four of us in the playoff originally. We go to the 18th hole, and the sun's still, it's a really bright sun coming over late in the afternoon, right on the tee, and you show them what you did. So Gary hits, Dallin Doyle hits, Guy Berger hits. I'm up. Oh, you want to talk? I know that he's the only guy who can reach the screen in two. Alan Doyle can't, and neither can Guy Berger. I hit a good one down the middle. He's coming up, he can hit it 30 past me. But when Johnny gets quick, it goes left, okay? That happens a lot a now, lot. you know? <laughs> a lot, because there's some serious power there. So I'm trying, and I'm trying to win my first tournament, and I really don't give a shit. I'm trying to win. So the sun is coming off my shoulder to the right, setting sun to Newport Beach, and Johnny's up, and the shadows are going that way. So I'm really good at making shadow animals, and I made a bunny. I made a bunny, and as Johnny took it back, right I made the bunny go past the ball. Right on top of the ball, I'm taking my downswing. Where'd you hit it? Duck hook. <laughs>
They're pretty good buddy. I was <laughs> play on television or that. I, I said, I mean, I, 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 blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we, we, we get up to the green. Well, some of you guys saw, you remember it, because it was classic playoff. I, I'm in the bushes. I can always just pitch out. But I happened to hit it. It ran a longer, long more than I thought it would. Gary hits the green about 30 feet right of the hole. Guyberg's over chili dipping. And I don't know what, I can't remember what happened to Doyle, but I get down there, <laughs> shit, I don't know, 40 yards short of the green on the left because the side of the bunker. I kind of had to skirt it a little bit. I hit this chip, it goes in. <laughs> chip in for eagle. And I fall down, ah, hey, Gary, hey. <laughs> so, so, so Gary, Gary gets up, he's looking at me like, so he, he gets up, doesn't even line his putt up, knocks it in from 30 feet. I got the ball of the hole, by the way. Yeah, he's dead. He's dead. Threw it to the he's gallery. Asshole. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> then when we play off, we go like down a hole, down a hole, we come back. No, it went se I know, like seven holes, but I, no, it maybe it was the first hole we played 18. Four we holes. Four holes. No, it did. Oh, it did too. We you went did. 18. They only had four holes. No, no, we went 18, then. 16, 17, 18, 18, 17, or 16 again. He's not good at math. Yeah, it was. But anyway, the, the par five, Gary has got. Three feet. Three feet. I'm making par, par five. He's got three footer. I just walked behind him. I said, don't put that stroke you do at home on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, the guy gives me the rabbit on the tee. I tell you, it was bad. I just really, you know, because they got those boom things out there. They can pick up for you. I just kind of don't put that stroke you do at home on this. Fucking bump. Don't even hit the hole. We block over. I'll get fucking even with you. So we go to the next hole. And I'm, I'm looking at this putter. This putter is shaking all over the place. I mean, it's, it, you cannot believe this thing has got a pulse, this putter, and it's moving. So I go to the next hole, and he basically can't get inside of 40 feet. I'm hitting a stiff. I can't make anything. This thing should still be going on, <laughs> this playoff. We get to the next hole. He hits it 40 feet. I hit it three feet again, three, four feet on number Downhill. 15. Downhill. It wasn't an easy I'm putt. I'm over the putt. I'm sitting there like this. No, tell I'm him about the poanas up about that high, too, poana greens. I'm growing. Yeah, it's yeah, growing. So I'm over this, I can't, there's no way I'm making this putt. None, zero, zero. He comes behind me. I'm, over, <laughs> I'm playing, I'm trying to win a golf tournament. This rat bastard <laughs> comes behind me and he goes, am I gonna see the same stroke I saw on the last one? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember I got over it and I went and I looked up and I said, you <laughs> asshole are out of here. <laughs> and I knocked it in to win. If he didn't say that, there was no way in the world, no way in the world I'd have made that putt. None. All right. Last story. Last story. And, and again, I, I could tell you a billion of them. A billion. This, is, this, this doesn't stop. This is, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. The, the story, my fun, and I, I use this in speeches and stuff. Uh, I, have a, I have a ball with this story. And I, I want to get your rendition of it because I have a tendency for hyperbole. Is that embellishing? So, same thing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, you were at the Bob Hope Classic during the middle of the tournament, coming back till you were staying at a friend's house at Thunderbird. Oh, the McCulloch's house. Uh huh. That's not one of the good ones, though. Well, what? Are you kidding? Did, did, have any of you heard of the Claude Harmon, how mean Claude Harmon was? You know, there's, you, you heard of Butch, and have you ever heard stories of or read about Claude, their father? Mean guy. He's head pro at uh, Wingfoot, and then in the, in the winter he comes out to Thunderbird. And there's a family called the McCulloch's, McCulloch's Chainsaw, McCulloch Oil, and they're the ones that have, in Havasu, the London Bridge he bought. Anyway, we're staying at his house. We get over there, and I don't know what round it was the tournament, but <laughs> I just got this new blue, with the, the blue roof, 
<laughs> Lincoln. You know all those big four-door Lincolns? Remember they come out with the big fin back deals? And man, I was proud of this car. <laughs> Pulled up to my car, she said, you're looking like an old man. This car. I mean, I remember telling I said, God damn, it's the best car I ever had. Anyway, <laughs> staying at her house. And McCulloch, it's a great house. She had, they had 4,700 glasses in their pool area, in a bar. And, the, and the, you know, you take one glass, next one comes out. And it was crystal. It wasn't like plastic. 4,700 4,700. And, and around their pool at Thunderbird, they had uh, four or five verandas where eight to 12 people would sit on, and the thing just turned for the sun. They had a sunken air-conditioned tennis. Anyway, it's beautiful. But make a long story short, no, don't. We're in there. No, no. We're in the house and we're drinking, raising hell. We had a pool party after the tournament was over. Blah blah blah. We'd sing. But I mean, she had some after would come by. Uh, uh, I mean, it, when I was like 20, 21, they were. Uh, Jimmy Durante was still alive, but he'd come by there and play the piano. I mean, it was magic, magic place. So we get to drink, and we're gonna now we're gonna go out and have dinner. I was so drunk I left there, I made the wrong turn coming, it's like a little cul-de-sac, you come down, you make a turn, it's right in the middle of, of Thunderbird Golf Course. You ever, any of you ever played Thunderbird Golf Course? I'm right in the middle of it, make this turn, go out, I don't remember it. From then on, I don't remember a thing. So, the next morning they wake me up on this couch, and uh, shit, I'm late for the tea, where'd it happen, blow my tea time, can't find me, the blah, what am I doing? What I did was, <laughs> I blew over this fence, the cart went down the par three hole, the 50 car. yards, the yeah, car, the car, the car, tore out all the fairway. Claude Harmon's looking, had the, he wanted to burn the car right there. Then <laughs> Where was the car? The car was in 50 yards down the par three in the side of a bunker. In the side of a bunker, and you tried to get four it out? Flat, four flat tires, oh, tried right to get Thunderbird car. I couldn't, yeah. You arr, couldn't get it out? Well, I don't remember that, but I could see the tracks, whatever. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, this couch, they finally wake me up. I'm at the next door neighbor's house. Not even at McCullough's house. Uh, <laughs> called the police, but McCullough got me out of that. But I, I went in there and I cooked breakfast, bacon, eggs, I had the toast, I cooked the whole thing, thought I was at McCullough's house. Anyway, missed it. <laughs> no tea time, no tea time. Meanwhile, I missed the second payment on my car. <laughs> anyway, there's some, I mean, this, it was a so, fun story. So let, let me get this right. So you put the car in the bunker when you thought the cart path was the street to go back to McCullough's. You drove yeah, the bunker. I, I did everything and you went wrong. up and down, and then you decided to go home at 3 o'clock in the morning. And you're a little shit-faced, so you started cooking breakfast for yourself. In the neighbor's But house. the neighbors called the cops because there's some guy in the kitchen cooking breakfast. <laughs> And the cops came and got you, and you missed the house only by one, which was good. You know why Gary knows this story? Because Doug Sanders was staying at the house, and uh, Al Johnson, another golfer, so he's heard the stories over the years. What, what happened to JJ? He, God, he had the nicest room by the pool. Why didn't he come home? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Mr. John Jacobs. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Everybody playing well this week. Have a good time. And keep drinking.